Should I rent or should I buy? Mortgage versus rent. Let's talk about it. Hi there, my name is Emily Farber and I'm a realtor with Levitt Craiger Realtors in Iowa City, Iowa. Thanks for joining me today. I create video content all about real estate and the greater Iowa City area. Hey, did you know I have a handy buyer's guide that is full of information that will be quite helpful if you are looking at making a home purchase? You can download it for free. I'll leave the link for that in the description box right below this video. If you don't know how to find that, all you need to do is tap on the title underneath this video and that description box will open right up. Hey, we all know that owning a home is part of that mythical American dream that so many people strive for. After all, it is a huge goal, but renting forever is an option and it's an option that works for some people. However, if you are interested in owning your own home, there are some questions that you should answer for yourself to determine if now is the right time. First off, for most people, purchasing a home means financing a significant portion of that purchase price. You're going to have to be able to qualify for the mortgage, right? Well, in order to do that, you will have to speak to a mortgage lender. And I always, always recommend talking to a local mortgage lender professional. That person is going to be able to not only give you your credit score, which by the way, may be different than what those online resources are telling you. He or she is also going to be able to tell you um, what interest rate they would be willing to extend to you for that mortgage, as well as the budget in which you are going to be working. Now, not all mortgage lenders are the same, and if you would like to talk to me about some really great local professionals, I'd be happy to share my list with you. Next up in your financial decision making is your nest egg. Yes, in an ideal world, people would have 20% down, but that doesn't often happen. I help buyers make home purchases in a variety of financial situations. I help people who are making a cash purchase for the entire purchase price, all the way up to people who are looking at homes with needing 100% financing to make it happen. No matter if you are a cash buyer or a 100% financed buyer, I do think it is important for you to have at least saved up enough money for your closing costs. Yes, sometimes you can get a seller to contribute towards buyer closing costs, but there is no guarantee in that and there are a lot of variables. So in order for you to be more comfortable in moving forward in the purchase, I think it's a great idea for you to have a few thousand dollars saved up in order to pay for your buyer closing costs. Another huge question you absolutely must answer for yourself is how long do you plan to stay in the area? Are you committed to the job or the community? If you are not and you think there's a fairly good possibility that you might be moving in the next two years or so, Home ownership may not be the best option for you. There's nothing wrong with renting if you think that you're going to be moving on down the road in a short period of time. If you do plan to put down roots and stick around in the area for at least three years, you may want to consider owning rather than renting. Now the information I'm about to present is specific to the greater Iowa City area because we are going to be building off of the assumption that the average rate of appreciation for real estate residential properties is about two to 4% a year. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking about purchasing in a different area, you will need to contact a local real estate agent and find out what that area's average rate of appreciation is. Now let's do just a little bit of math so that I can show you through the numbers why three years is that threshold for when you could be looking at making a home purchase and still having a profit when it comes time to sell if you're only gonna stay there for three years. If your current rent is between $1,200 and $1,400 a month and you wanted your mortgage to be in that same zone, with our current low interest rates, very little money down and decent credit, taking into account your monthly mortgage, taxes, and insurance, here in the greater Iowa City area, you could likely purchase a home priced between $200,000 and $225,000. Okay, so let's say you bought a house for $225,000 and in three years, you've decided to take a new job and you're going to leave the area. 
at 3% appreciation, assuming you've done a decent job of keeping the house up, you could be expecting to sell the house at about $246,000. But let's say you've done a few more things to make it even snazzier, such as fresh paint and some new appliances. So let's round your new selling price up to $250,000. You hire a great real estate agent to help you get it sold, and before long, you've got an offer. If the offer price is $250,000 and you subtract your purchase price of $225,000, you're looking at a $25,000 profit. The brokerage fees in this particular case would be $15,000 to sell your house. Now keep in mind, there is no standard brokerage fee, they can vary. That means you'd be looking at about $10,000 net. Now there still are some more fees that are involved with selling your house. So you need to leave a cushion for expenses like property tax proration, a few legal fees, and any money you would need to spend to address remedy issues. As you can see, three years is about the minimum amount of time that you would need to live in the house in order to sell it and make a small profit. Now let's be real, no seller wants to come to the closing table and have to pay money in order to sell their house. Sometimes things are beyond our control, so let's look at it from another perspective. If you had been paying a landlord $1,200 a month and you'd been living in that townhome for three years, you would have paid that landlord $36,000 for the privilege of paying down that landlord's mortgage. That is a sobering thought. So even if you do end up purchasing a house and you end up leaving before your goal of a minimum of three years, there's always more than one way to look at it. At least you're not out that much money. Some other things to consider when you're debating rent versus mortgage have to do with your financial preparedness. Beyond having closing costs and maybe some down payment saved up, you're going to need to have money for your emergency fund. Your what? Yes, one of the not so great benefits of home ownership is that those unexpected financial surprises having to do with repairs and replacements become your problem and not your landlord's problem. So sometimes with home ownership, you have time to save up in order to pay for something. For instance, you wanna replace that ugly flooring or you know the roof is nearing the end of its life expectancy and you're starting to budget for a new roof. Sometimes you'll have expenses that come out of the blue, like your refrigerator or your water heater just craps out and you have to buy a new one. In those cases, you really need to have a few thousand dollars squirreled away into an emergency fund so that when you have to buy those things, it doesn't come as such a <coughs> hit. Depending upon how financially conservative you are, you may even want more money. Some people are really only comfortable when they have an emergency fund that is capable of paying for all household expenses for three to six months. That includes things like emergency repairs, mortgage, and utility payments. Because if you were to lose your job, then you would have to tap into that big emergency fund. Another thing to consider is the type of house that your budget will allow you. If your lender has given you a range and that range will only buy you a small one bedroom condo, but you're in a relationship and you're thinking about having children soon, you are not going to want to stay in that one bedroom condo for long. You're simply going to outgrow it. When you're making a home purchase, ideally that home should be able to suit your needs for the next several years, the next stage in life. So chances are you'll want a home with a few bedrooms so there's room to grow. Hey, thanks for joining me on today's video. I hope you found it to be useful as you debate, should I rent or should I buy? Don't forget about that free buyer's guide. I'll leave the link for it in the description box. I'd love to chat with you if you are thinking about buying. You can find all of my contact information down in that description box. Give me a call, give me a text, give me an email, and I will be sure to reach out to you. One other thing, if you are in the YouTube mood and you like these videos, check out my playlist right here. This is my buyer's playlist and it is full of great videos to help you learn more all about the real estate buying process. Hey, it's been fun. Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you 
Later.